In this video, I give you a detailed description of the deck section in Serato DJ. Find out more coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. So this upper third of the screen right here is the deck section in Serato DJ. This is the most important section uh, in my opinion as this is where you'll find most of the features where you'll, <clears throat> where you'll spend a lot of the time setting things up such as cue points and loops and just holds a lot of information and where your eyes will be a lot of the times on the screen in Serato DJ. So let's go ahead and start with this section right here. This section right here, you'll find the song title, the artist, the key of the song, the BPM of the song, and the time uh, of the song or the length of the song. Also, you'll find uh, controls to edit your beat grids, as well as a repeat function. And right here, if you have a interface or mixer that has four decks, you can switch between deck one and three on this side and deck two and four on this side. So you'll have access to um, the four different decks depending on uh, how you have your two decks set up. <clears throat> some people have it set up on um, you know, one and two, some people have it on three and four. You also can access all four decks at once um, in this four deck mode. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick in this mode as most of the Serato interfaces are actually two decks. Now let's move on to uh, this section right here. This is where you'll find the three different modes in Serato DJ. You have absolute mode, which will make the track and the uh, Serato DJ act like it's just playing a vinyl or uh, it's playing a CD. So you, in this mode, in absolute mode, you actually don't have many of the functions such as looping and such. Next we have relative mode, which makes it act more like um, a modern BVS where you have access to all of the features. <clears throat> oh, I, I'm sorry, let me go back. In absolute mode to um, the beginning of the track uh, on the actual time code, so the beginning of the CD or the very beginning of the vinyl is going to be the beginning of the song on the Serato DJ. So it really acts like a uh, true vinyl or a true CD. So if you drop the needle or skip on the CD all the way to the middle, it's going to jump to the middle of the track. Relative mode does not do that. Where uh, Wherever you drop the needle on relative mode, if you hit Q.1 and you roll back to the beginning in the software, it's going to act like that's the beginning of the software. So you don't have to worry about things like skipping and things like that if the needle jumps a little bit, so you get a little bit more play in that sense. <clears throat> Down here, we have the internal mode. So say you're having issues with your needles or the CD scratched, you can move it into internal mode and then all the control actually happens in the software. So um, it's not relying on the time code of the CDs or the, the vinyl. And also internal mode is what you'll be using if you're using HID with uh, CDJs. So if you just go ahead and turn on HID on the CDJ, you'll see the software is flipped automatically to internal mode because it's basically using just a CDJ as a controller, a MIDI controller for a Serato DJ. So it's just using the, the internal clock instead of using time code. <clears throat> right under that, you have your pitch bend. So you have plus and minus um, to pitch bend it up or pitch bend it down. Uh, just like you have on some CDJs, uh, even some turntables have pitch bend. So if you're one of those people where you, just need, you don't want to have to nudge it, actually, if you're not using HID, you're not able to nudge it, so you have to use the pitch bend up and down to kind of beat match if you're not using sync. Range right here, this is just like the range, the pitch range buttons on a CDJ or a turntable. You can flip between the different percentages, 8, 16, 50, wide, etc. In this section right here is uh, where you're going to be spending a lot of time. So in this mode right here, this top one, this is actually split between cue points and loops. So you have your eight cue points right here at the top. Then you have your loops at the bottom right here. You have two saved loops. If you switch to just loop mode, you get access to all your saved loops. So you actually have many saved loops that uh, you can have, just not the two that are shown in this screen. The difference is that you're just not able to view all of them at once, but you can go ahead and click on this and 
access your other, uh, I believe, eight loops. So you can access loops three through eight in this mode, whereas in this one, you're only able to see two at a time. Cue points, of course, are uh, markers you can put in the song where you can recall to certain parts of the song right away. Easy as that. So if, uh, say you're queuing up a part of the song where that's where you mix in, you can go ahead and just jump to a part of the song, hit this plus button, and it'll just drop a cue point right there and it'll save it within the MP3. So whenever you load it, it'll be there uh, for you to access without you having to remember to queue up that exact part of the song. One of the um, most useful, and in my opinion, the most useful um, part of any DVS is having uh, the ability to have cue points instead of having to rewind the, the record and uh, jump and cue point, or I'm sorry, and cue different parts of the song. So <clears throat> this, again, this mode is cue points and loops. And like I said, this is just safe loops. So for instance, if I go to say, I don't know, this part of the song, and I want a, a loop, I would go ahead and go through this section right here, which is the different auto loops. So this is uh, quarter beat, half beat, one beat, two, four, eight, 16, 32, etc. So say I wanted to do a four bar loop where that's 16 beats. I can go ahead and hit this button right here. You'll see this turns blue. And now if I play this through, You'll see it just loops back around uh, wherever this blue highlighted section is. So if I take that from here and then I move it to eight bars four, you'll notice up here that <clears throat> the highlighted section either becomes bigger or smaller depending on what loop value I have. And then if I want to save that loop, I can go ahead and just click the plus sign. And now that loop is saved. So if I go up here to the cue point and loop section, you'll see that it's saved right here. So whenever I load the song, the next time, just like with cue points, if I have them saved in these save loops, they're good to go and they're saved in the in the, the MP3 as well. So I'll just go ahead and clear that for this example. Uh, next, you can actually change this section right here. If you go to setup and show beat jump controls, and now <clears throat> this lower row has been replaced with beat jump controls instead of having um, more loop controls. This is actually uh, the mode I prefer because I use beat jump a lot. And if you haven't seen my videos on uh, beat jump, I'll go ahead and link that up in the, the card above. <clears throat> but just a quick overview, beat jump lets you, lets you jump in time throughout the song depending on how many beats you select. So I usually have mine set on 16, which is four bars, since it <clears throat> works with a uh, most music that I use, and I'm just used to uh, running in four bars. So again, if you haven't seen that video, check that out. It's really informative. Next, we have the flip section right here. So what flip does, it allows you to kind of edit a song in real time um, by using different cue points. So let me give you an example of that real quick. So if I go ahead and turn on flip controls right here, hit record, and then if I start playing, so and then I stop, now if I play that back, So let's play that. Now as you can see, it recorded my uh, cue point triggering that I did and saved it as a song. <clears throat> I should say an alternate version of the song. So once I stopped recording, it'll just play out the song uh, like it would regularly. So this is good for... Um, Say you you want to jump from the first verse to the third verse of a song, or you want to double up a chorus in a song, or it also records uh, sensor functions. So 
if you want to bleep out all the curse words in a song, you could technically do it as well. Flip's a, a, a newer feature that they added to Serato DJ. I've added it to, um, I have flips for quite a few of my songs for that exact fact of um, jumping to a different verse or jumping to different parts of songs or extending an intro, etc. Um, really useful, but it is not included in Serato DJ. It's an actual add-on for $20. Um, I think it's a steal. Something useful, especially if you're an open format DJ that finds themselves, you know, doing the same uh, kind of mix, jumping from one verse to another. I mean, if you know you can do it, you can go ahead and just save it and just save yourself some time and just build it into the, um, build a flip, put it in with the MP3 so you don't have to worry about doing it again. It takes out an extra step and just makes you more flexible and faster as a DJ. So that's flip. <clears throat> Quick overview of flip. Uh, I think it's really useful and well worth the $20. So next we'll go into this section right here. Um, the main deck right here, you'll see, you have the BPM, which is a BPM readout of whatever the current BPM is. So if I move the pitch fader, you'll see that it jumps <clears throat> to whatever the BPM is. You have the plus and minus right here, which lets you know how much plus or minus you're actually going, just like on a CDJ. Then you have your pitch range amount right here, which will change. So 16, 50, 8, et cetera, like I explained earlier. This top number right here is actually your time elapsed. Bottom number is time remaining in the song. Uh, this marker right here shows you um, what's coming up next as far as cue points concerned, how far away you are. Right here we have the sync button if you're into using sync, as well as the off if you want to turn sync on or off. Jump to the beginning of the song. Play button if you're in um, internal mode. So. There's those buttons in use. This right here is, I'm sorry here, this right here is going to be your uh, key lock, master tempo, same thing. So no matter what pitch you're at, it's just going to go ahead and keep the same. I mean, no matter what speed you're at, it'll go ahead and just keep it playing at the same pitch. So it's really useful. <clears throat> You have your sensor mode, which I was explaining before, which you would use for uh, either effects of like, you know, running backwards or uh, bleeping out curse words. You have your slip mode, which you can find on CDJs as well, where no matter what action you take on the deck, it'll still kind of just uh, keep moving forward. And you have your eject button, which uh, ejects the song out of the deck. Right here, you have your meters. It tells you how loud the song is. Uh, I mean, some MP3s are a little bit lower, some MP3s are a little bit louder, so this lets you know and kind of gives you an idea of uh, comparing to the deck, the other deck to see if they're about the same level internally. So it's good to know. Right here is your gain control, so say this song is a little bit lower than this one, you can go ahead and gain it and add a little bit more volume on this side, so you have a little bit more control within the software. Next we have uh, the waveform section right here. So let me load another song on the other side. <clears throat> let me jump to the middle somewhere right around here. So now we have two songs loaded. Right here, this top, this top one is deck one. This is deck two on the bottom. This is horizontal. This is the way I like to use Serato DJ, but you can have the vertical mode, <clears throat> which I know a lot more DJs use because it makes more sense. I explained in my previous video, since this deck is on this side and this deck is on this side, a little bit uh, easier to see and a little less confusing. But let me break down this section. <clears throat> so these two big waveforms are your, your basic overview, which um, lets you see a little bit in depth of where you are in the song. If you're using the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard, you can actually make these bigger or smaller, depending on, you know, how you like it. Some people like it bigger, some people like them smaller. I like them around that size. You see right below here and on top, this is the full overview of the song. So this gives you the song from start to finish. <clears throat> this is good if, you know, you need to quickly jump through a song. You can just pick a point, click on it, and the song will jump there. 
Um, as long as you're in relative mode. Again, this does not work in absolute mode. This only works in relative or internal. So you'll, you're able to jump wherever you need to be in the song. Also, you have this white playhead to let you know exactly how far you are into the song. So say I move forward. See the white head, white playhead kind of just follows along. <clears throat> so that's the complete overview. Right here is uh, one of the two beat matching um, waveforms right here. So you see you only get the real peaks of the waveform. So if I play one, let me play it. And then I play this one. You can see like when these line up, the song begins the beat match because it's matching the peaks and valleys, which is, um, I mean, usually snares, um, kicks and stuff like that, where it's going to be mostly on beat. I mean, of course, use your ears more than just your eyes because there'll be stuff like really high hi-hats or maybe snare rolls and stuff where this isn't always going to be 100%. Um, so it's just another way of quickly glancing at it and seeing if you're beat matching and you're close or you're far away. Because if you can, as you can see, I'll do that again. You can see that when they're far away like this, it's really off. So you know that you need to either roll the pitch up or bend one of them <clears throat> just to get a beat match and get these lined up. And you're more likely to get two beat, beat match songs. Up here is the other beat match waveform, which actually takes the peaks and valleys of the entire song and kind of just uh, lays them out so you, you don't just get one or two peaks here and there. They're kind of in bunches like that. So if you run those two together, you can see that it's starting to link, they're starting to look closer together because these BPMs are close. So this is another way to just, you know, make sure that you're kind of beat matched is get the pitches close together and you can if you don't want to look at the numbers look at this to make sure the peaks and valleys are close and then um, after that move to this waveform see if it's close and then move to the the main waveform to see if they're really lining up if you just want to use your eyes that's uh, probably like the workflow for Serato uh, this one this waveform right here was a lot more useful uh, when the numbers were smaller in Serato's scratch live uh, the, to me, this was a lot more useful, but this is also useful if you're using transition songs that go from one BPM to the other and you haven't beat gridded it to match the BPM or in Serato Scratch Live, you weren't able to have a song have multiple BPMs. So if you needed to know where you were, this was a good way to uh, see like if you went from 70 to 100 BPM and you weren't sure if the pitch was uh, plus or minus like where you were, you could use this top. Uh, waveform to see if you're beat matched. So it took a, a lot of guessing out of that as well. And that really uh, wraps up the deck section in Serato DJ. I mean, a lot of the features are here, like I showed. Uh, you'll be spending a lot of time setting up your cue points, loops, looking at the waveforms a lot as you're beat matching or glancing at them, not staring at them, hopefully. And um, yeah, this is the main section of Serato DJ, and I hope you guys found this useful. So that's the deck section in Serato DJ. So question of the day, which part of the deck section is most important and useful to you? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you for watching P.TV where you find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.